Hello and a very big welcome to all the viewers watching Soul to Soul talk show. In this episode, we will be continuing our journey with Sister Maureen from London. A big Hi. welcome to you, Sister. Thank you. A pleasure to, to have you with us. Yeah. So, we started our spiritual journey with Sister Maureen uh, with her experiences on uh, her sweet relationships that she shares with God. Uh, so, Sister, in this journey of 36 years that you have covered as a spiritual being, uh, could you define spirituality? <laughs> yes. Uh, Spirituality means different things to different people. Hmm. For me, it's about understanding the spiritual nature of my being, hmm. understanding that I am a spiritual being in essence, and that the original qualities within my being, which hmm. actually I believe all beings share, all human beings share, those original qualities or core qualities are peace, love, happiness, wisdom, and mm. purity. Mm. That these are really our core qualities. And spirituality is about keeping those qualities alive in my consciousness or in my awareness. Mm. And allowing those qualities to express themselves as spiritual values. Mm. So from the quality of love, you have compassion, forgiveness, nurture, kindness. From peace, you have clarity and calm. From wisdom, you have a clear conscience, truth, a good way of working. Mm. Um, Nonviolence also comes from wisdom. Mm. Um, and so with those qualities in mind, you then begin to live by higher values. And you have the strength and the will not to compromise those values. So mm. that for me is spirituality. And spirituality is the real dignity of the human being. So is it needed for everyone? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. But sister, uh, we find uh, people from various economic backgrounds uh, living here. Yes. And uh, sometimes we come across people who uh, don't have enough money to even buy three meals in a day. Uh, if when they are undergoing such an economic, uh, economically uh, poor, uh, very pitiable conditions, uh, why do you think it is necessary for them also to take up spirituality when they don't have time to even uh, get the three, get the basic needs of their life, why should they take up spirituality? Sure, sure. Um, uh, spirituality isn't something that takes time, it's actually an attitude towards life. Hmm. It's a way, a way of living. Um, even if somebody is still struggling to fulfill their basic needs, hmm. I have witnessed myself with people that I've worked with from time to time, that if somebody has spirituality in their life, they're able to make use of their resources better, no matter how limited they are. Hmm. And also, they're able to have the foresight, the courage, the inner strength to take advantage of opportunities which will help them to better their condition. Hmm. Um, sometimes people are in difficult circumstances and they feel the burden of those circumstances they feel a lot of stress, a lot of worry. And if there's spirituality, there can be a greater sense of calm and clarity within. Hmm. And there are solutions that are possible. Hmm. Um, I think everybody knows about the situation with the farmers here in India, and many are committing suicide, right. and it's a very, very difficult situation. Um, I was now in Hyderabad just about a week ago mm. at the UN conference on biodiversity. Mm. And one of the people that I met there, he is also studying with the Brahma Kumaris, he's from Mumbai. He works in agriculture, he's been working with farmers now for many years. And he said that when he first really understood the plight of the farmers, he literally cried. He literally cried with tears mm. because he felt that they were in this 
trap of poverty, of poor production and so on because of ignorance, because of not understanding certain basic fundamental things. And he gave the example of um, the use of fertilizer. And uh, this was just one example he gave, and I know you and the viewers will have many more mm. uh, um, you know, examples of this kind of thing, and, uh, and I'm sure are much more no knowledgeable than I am of this matter, but you know, I'm just giving an example really mm. to illustrate the principle. And um, they were encouraged to use neem leaves mm. on the plants to um, kill the worms that were eating the crops. And uh, they put the neem leaves one day, two days, the worms were still there. So the farmers got frustrated. And so they then went and bought expensive chemicals like, you know, it's like maybe 30, 40 times the price of mm. the natural methods, which they couldn't afford. They applied the chemicals and then, of course, pretty instantly the worms were we killed. Did, right. But actually, nobody had explained to the farmers that the neem leaves take three or four days to act. <laughs> and they couldn't wait because mm. they didn't understand. He began explaining to the farmers, um, you know, certain principles of how, you know, farming could happen in a more natural way. Mm. He also helped them with their well-being. And so their, their thinking, their attitude towards life, which is part of spirituality. And as a result, the farmers, many different groups of farmers have nominated him for awards because mm. of the help mm -hmm. that he's given. Uh, the award is not the issue, but um, with a greater presence of mind, with patience, mm. with a willingness to learn, with being able to see a, a bigger perspective, many, many things are possible on a very practical level. Hmm. So that's where I feel spirituality is important. And another aspect of it is that very often people, poor people are exploited hmm. because the values that are working in our, our world are greed and um, hunger for position and, and so on, uh, hunger for power. And, uh, and, and, you know, where people are working from these values, and particularly from greed, um, they'll do anything to try and satiate their greed and their desire for more. And, and then there isn't any trace of humanity in the way in which they work. Human values, spiritual values, have really been put to one side, and, and human beings become a commodity to exploit. Mm. Spirituality, I believe, is the only way to reverse this. Without spirituality, without empowering the human spirit from within, hmm. it's not possible for there to be a change in values so that the higher values can begin to work and basically people's conscience can be awakened. Hmm. So I see spirituality as important at all levels. Um, within the family home, if somebody without spirituality has tension at home, then how is that person going to do their work in the best way that they can? You know, at all levels, at the level of our relationships, use of resources, our work, our um, willingness to learn and be educated, you know, at every level, values are essential, values are empowered by spirituality. So hmm. I don't see it as a luxury, I see it as an essential way of life. So it can we say that spirituality sort of weaves values and humanity together? Absolutely. So it's like a foundation to get them, get them in your life? Absolutely. Mm. Spirituality is the foundation. Spirituality is at the heart of a good, sustainable lifestyle. Yeah. Uh, talking about value, sister, we, even if I personally want to bring in these good values in my life, I find that uh, there are many situations that I face when I, you know, sticking to that value is not in my c in my hands. Like I've been forced to go against the values, the principles that I want to follow. So when I'm surrounded by such uh, situations, how do I still uh, hold on to my values? <laughs> okay, I think it's very important for us to have a lot of courage in this. Hmm. We need courage because in reality, if I have my own high principles. If I have my dignity, if I have courage, nobody 
can force me to let go of those values. But I need to be very, very strong. <laughs> and I know you're going to Even say to me. Even if they threaten that, okay, yeah, you will lose your job. Is at stake. Right. Yes, yes. Um, I know people who've been in situations where um, maybe they have made a sacrifice. Maybe they have even made a sacrifice of their of job. Of job, okay. Mm. And of course, they've often had, it's not just their own dependency, they've had, you know, their children, their families. Right. Um, but because they've had faith in doing the right thing, mm. faith in the spiritual principles that good karma is going to come back to me, mm. they have been taken care of and protected. Um, and actually, but even before it gets to that point, hmm. um, one thing is to, in a sense, make a stand. And in a, uh, now it seems a, a, an anachronism, you know, that we make a stand and we're even aggressive about maintaining right. our values. Sometimes you get very aggressive. And that? Trying to make a stand. Exactly. Ah. And I've seen that that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> you're actually mixing two things right. together. You know, it's like saying, I'm going to fight for peace. Well, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> when you're you fighting, there's, a, there's exactly. already a lot of peace. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And this is where, again, with spirituality, we need to make that connection between inner change and outer change. Hmm. And uh, if... Um, I apply my values with humility and with love and with dignity, others begin to respond. Even and if again, it takes time. Even if it take it may take time, but quietly, gently, I stand by my values. And others see, because my conscience is clear, others see my happiness. Hmm. And they say, Well, what are you doing? I want to be like that. So we need a lot of courage, but we need to use our values in a gentle and humble way, hmm. but a very firm way. And then we can really begin to make change. Uh, do we have to inculcate all the values in our life? See, there are many values. Uh, if we take the example of Gandhiji, Mahatma Gandhiji, he had stuck to two uh, values mainly, truth and non-violence. Brought about a huge change to the nation, uh, but there are many other, many more values. So, uh, which is the right way to uh, become a to take up values in your life? Is it you take up all the values, or you choose something that you feel you can easily get in your life, and uh, does that lead you to the other values, or how does it happen? Uh, they are all connected, which mm. is very lovely. Um, the foundation is that practice of spirituality or the practice of soul consciousness which we think mentioned in the, in the mm. last episode that's very fundamental because in that awareness of myself as a spiritual being and that relationship with with God I really do have the strength to inculcate my values mm. and actually you mentioned truth and nonviolence, mm. and I really feel these are foundational values mm. And if I adhere to the values of truth and nonviolence, all other values will come to me. <laughs> and uh, I, I, and nonviolence is not just about you know not acting aggressively right, not killing or, or right. killing or, or mm -hmm. something, but it's really about nonviolence in my thoughts. It's really about not giving sorrow. So even if I criticize another person, hmm. I'm giving them sorrow. Of what use is it and of what benefit is it to me or to them? If I criticize someone, hmm. I'm negative within myself, hmm. so I'm not happy. And then that person, hearing my criticism, isn't going to learn from it. They won't be able to, if I tell them you're doing something wrong and it's bad, they're going to feel bad and they're going to resist it. Hmm. So criticism and even violence in our thinking, violence in our words, Giving sorrow doesn't help anybody and doesn't help us to change or the other person to change or society to change. Hmm. And people often feel that they need to force change. Right. You actually, and this is again Gandhi's principle, you need to be the change, you <laughs> need to model the change. Um, I really feel in our organization that our elder sisters, our daddies, 
really set very, very high standards for us. And it's because of setting those high standards that we feel the courage, uh, well, let me speak for myself, I feel the courage to say that, well, if they can do it, I can do it, and it inspires me. It's not a question of copying them, it's about a question of deep inspiration, hmm. that I can do this for myself and make my life elevated. And yes, I'm going to live my life in my own way, and my path through life will be different. No two people are the same. Right. Uh, you know, uh, that's absolutely so, and that's the uniqueness of our world. But values, yes, they will enable me to live in the highest possible way mm -hmm. that will be of the greatest benefit to humanity. And where there's truth and nonviolence, there will naturally be compassion. Mm -hmm. There will naturally be humanity. I will naturally seek the good, not just for myself, but for all. Mm. So um, I will move out of a selfish mode of working towards a more selfless mode of working. And that's much more satisfying. It brings me contentment. When you serve, you feel contented. So if I want to take a conscious uh, step to become a, from a person who wants to a person who gives, yes. what should I uh, start with? Like what should be the first step that I take? Well, first, I need to really know my own self mm. so that uh, I begin to experience my inner qualities, my inner treasures that we've spoken about, the truth, the love, the peace, the wisdom, the purity. Mm. And just experiencing that gives me what I need on a spiritual, emotional, mental level. Where we feel a gap and we feel an emptiness, because we're not in touch with those qualities, we want to fill it. Hmm. And we fill it by external things. So we don't feel we have a sense of identity. So what do I do? I want to be something. I want to prove myself to someone. And you know, if you keep proving yourself, there's a fear underlying that, that somebody isn't going to accept you, hmm. that someone's going to reject you. Now why should I live with that fear, you know? But if I feel those qualities on the inside, then my happiness and contentment comes from being who I am and being a good human being. Mm. And so then even if people criticize me, I know my own value and you can't ever take that away from me. Mm. I know it because I know who I am. But when I don't know who I am and I'm trying to fill the gap by being I don't know, the best teacher or having the biggest car or <laughs> having the best position, then, you know, at any minute it's there, next minute it's taken away. So what kind of happiness is it? Mm -hmm. um, there's um, a, a very beautiful saying from Daddy Janki, which I often quote, and she said once, um, it's a lack of wisdom to think that the one who insults you is your enemy and the one who praises you is your friend. Is mm. that what your happiness is based on? <laughs> because if somebody insults me, well, I have something to learn. Mm -hmm. And they're my friend. If somebody praises me, they can easily manipulate me and make me do what they want me to do. Mm. So they're not my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yes, encouragement and appreciation is fine. Mm. But praise that can have an agenda behind it, we have to be careful. Mm. Uh, sister, another issue that uh, people very, very commonly face is uh, that they're being very sensitive to even little, little issues that co that crop up in their life and they're not able to face it, they're not able to uh, come out of it. Uh, so can spirituality help them in such situations and how, how does it do it? Definitely, yes. Mm. And I know that um, you know, I used to be very sensitive myself, <laughs> you know, you could just make me cry very easily <laughs> <laughs> and uh, much stronger now. Hmm. And um, it actually relates back to this whole thing of identity that we were talking about earlier. Hmm. And where my identity is very fragile, then the least little thing can cause me upset. Uh, and basically what's happening is that I'm living on my ego or a false persona rather than living from my true self and who mm. I am. And so if I build up a, a, a sort of persona for myself that I want other people to see me in a certain way, 
then I'm very careful to maintain that, you know. I mm, have to right. look a certain way, I have to dress a certain way, I have to have certain people around me, uh, and have certain objects around me, mm. and so on and so forth. My lifestyle is very important to me. And if somebody comes along and says something which is contrary to the image I have built up of myself, mm. it's very difficult to take because it's like my whole identity is being threatened, mm. right? So, you know, if, if I'm feeling that I want to wear certain clothes and look nice and then someone comes along and says, well, I think you look very scruffy, <laughs> you know, I can get very upset. Mm. But what am I getting upset about? Mm. Clothes? Does it really matter? Is it really that important? What's more important is the kind of person that I am. Mm. And so spirituality strengthens the person inside, strengthens the real you. Mm. So then your identity is not based upon all these other things. Relationships, you know, um, being the perfect mother, being the perfect daughter, sister, whatever. Mm. And then where there's tension in relationships, I feel I've failed because all my identity is based on that relationship. Mm. But actually, as a soul, as a being, we're much greater than all the relationships and all the roles. Who is <laughs> playing the roles? Mm. Who is acting in this world? It's the spiritual being. And only when I strengthen that identity within mm. will I be able to let go of my sensitivity. And I found that. And you know, as I strengthened that spiritual identity, my whole thinking began to change. Mm. And even if I made a mistake, and I do make mistakes, you know, I used to get very upset if I made a mistake, but now I say to myself, okay, it happened, fine. What do I have to learn? Okay, move on. Mm. And that's very different to when I would beat myself up for days saying, oh, I did this, I shouldn't have done it. Right, and basically keep thinking about it. Keep yeah. thinking about it and what will so-and-so think of me and, you know, Hmm. And now I don't think like that. I say, okay, it happened. And I know also it's a principle that if I don't think about it, the other person won't think about it. But if I'm thinking about it and ruminating on it all the time, it's going to stick in their mind <laughs> as well. And when they see me, they'll see me. They won't see me as a person. They'll see me as a mistake. Hmm. <laughs> but I'm a person. Right. <laughs> so I need to keep that awareness in myself alive of who I really am. And then according to my own awareness, so others relate to me. Hmm. So if I f I'm aware of myself as a spiritual being with that dignity, others will be respectful towards me. I can't ask for respect. Hmm. But if I have self-respect, I will naturally give respect and others will reciprocate. The causes that you mentioned, are they the, say, the pathway to identity crisis that many people face now? Yeah. Uh, I think so. I mm. think so. Um, it's because we've become quite materialistic in our outlook that people go through that. Um, our whole consumer society uh, and the way in which advertising is, is framed is to consciously make us or, or to constantly make us dissatisfied. Mm. You know, you think about it. Uh, the media <laughs> we keep wanting want more. <laughs> exactly. So the, the posters and the advertising hoardings are always telling you, well, you'll be a better person if you <laughs> drink a certain kind of, I don't know, right. and if you, you know, wear a certain kind of suit, all the nice girls will come to you, or if you right. or tell a woman if you have the quite the right drinks. kind of <laughs> deodorant or perfume, that's where you can. Right. I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's giving us a myth that it's not true, mm. you know, and people, uh, our relationships are based on our qualities, not on our deodorant <laughs> or <laughs> perfume. Um, but, you know, we've been led along a path, people in society are led along a path of thinking that this is where the identity lies, mm. in the latest smartphone and the trainers and so on. And this kind of uh, influence of consumerism uh, and materialism is what unfortunately is leading to an identity crisis. And I feel particular concern um, for young people because when you're young, you're very easily influenced. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just part of life. You want to feel you belong, you want to feel part of the crowd, and so you want to do what everybody is doing and, and you get influenced in that way. 
Hmm. And actually, um, I've been quite involved too with um, the Brahma Kumari's work with young people. Hmm. And uh, we've done a, a lot of very good courses, retreats, activities. In fact, we have a particular series of retreats that's happened here in India and abroad called Choose, Change and Become. Hmm. And it's for young emerging leaders hmm. um, between the ages of 18 and 35. And it's encouraging them to really see what do I really want in life? What is really meaningful to me? Hmm. What are the values that I hold dear? Hmm. And how can I begin to make changes on the basis of that? And I know young people who've come to these retreats, uh, it's really been life changing for them. Hmm. They've really been able to go back into their workplace, their professions, their families with a very different awareness and a very different kind of self-confidence that's based on a very true and sustainable self-esteem because it's based on spirituality. And so this is very, very important to move away from, from this kind of way of living. It's fine to have nice things, <laughs> it's fine to live decently, you know, we're not, I, I won't say that you don't do that, but let me not be so dependent mm. that my happiness only depends on that. So, you know, this is uh, right. something that uh, I think is very, very important in today's life. And that identity crisis is really when I lose myself in all these things hmm. and I forget who I am. And then that person is in a very great state of confusion and does need help. And I think spirituality is a very, very big way in which we can help people to move out of that state of crisis mm. into a state where there's a life of happiness and and a life that's uh, of a very positive and valuable contribution towards society. I had an absolute pleasure taking this journey with your sister. Thank you. It's been a great pleasure for me too. Thank you so much. So, um, we hope our viewers had an eye opener in this journey with Sister Maureen and uh, take that first step to just understand spirituality as a process to identify yourself, to get, out, to get yourself out of this identity crisis and make your life better and lead it in a much happier way. And uh, we wish uh, to get back uh, to you with uh, yet more eminent and special people from different countries and different professions in the forthcoming episodes. Uh, hoping to see you soon. I and Sister Maureen are taking leave from you now. Thank you viewers for joining us. Thank you sister. Thank for you so us. much. Thank you. Have a great life.